My grandpa used to tell a lot of stories. One of the stories he'd tell us was the legend of the white lady. A century ago, there were a lot of small mining towns in Spring Canyon, just west of Helper, Utah. You have six towns within six miles. So the Spring Canyon area was actually developed uh, right around 1910, um, when they found coal deposits uh, in the Spring Canyon area. I, we personally have tracked back as much information about her as we can. Um, the problem is, is that her circumstances, what happened to her, happened to so many women in so many mining camps every day that there were no records kept. Um, the mining companies kept better records on their horses and their mules um, than they did on their miners. Because if a horse or a mule died in the coal mine, they had to close down for the day while they found another horse. If a miner died, they literally brought his body out and another miner was standing right there and he went right back in. Even the old newspapers, they never reported on mine accidents because it was a daily occurrence. For a, a single minor accident, there really weren't many records kept. So, so what we know is the white lady, the, the famous ghost of Spring Canyon. She was an immigrant to Lechuda with her husband. Immigrants uh, were actually sought out by the mining companies. They would go to Yugoslavia, Italy, Greece, um, and they would actually tell these miners, uh, you know, come to America. You'll have your own house, you'll have your own furniture, and you will be rich beyond your wildest dreams. So they, they were really sought after. They were cheap labor and they worked very, very hard. And they want, most of the time they wanted to leave their own country because of war or famine or some type of strife that was going on in their country. So this sounded like a perfect opportunity for them. Shortly after they arrived, she had a baby. She had a small daughter and um, everything was great. Everything was absolutely perfect and wonderful until a mine accident took him. And once the mine accident happened, things changed drastically for the woman left behind. The mine company officials came to the house and they told her that her husband had died. And they were very sorry, but mining's dangerous. And the bad news is your husband doesn't work for the mine company anymore, so you don't live in this house anymore either. She took her baby and went to the mine office. The mine office sat at the top of a hill, um, a large two-story building with a balcony, and she walked up the steps and begged them that she couldn't be turned out into the street because she had a baby daughter, and what was she going to do? They told her there was really nothing they could do, and she left the office, went down to the creek, and as she sat there, she contemplated, you know, she could go home, but she had no money to do so. She could live on the street and beg, but she would not see her child grow up doing that. So in a fit of desperation, not knowing what to do, she drowned the baby in the creek. She then went back to the house, got her one item of value that she truly cherished, which was her white wedding dress, walked back up the steps to the mine office and hung herself from the balcony of the second floor. The mine office employees knew nothing about it until they heard the wind knocking her body against the railing. They went out, found her, hurried and cut her down. Uh, now this has compounded things because you have a mine accident that a person has died, the mine company doesn't want that to be released, and now the widow has now hung themselves on your property, even worse for public relations. Then someone realized she had a baby with her, and where was the baby? So they searched the town, could not find the baby, and quietly sent the woman to be buried. Right after um, this all happened, people saw a woman dressed all in white walking up and down the streets of Latuta, and she'd walk up to the windows of the houses and look inside like she was looking for something, probably her child. It became kind of a, a good child disciplinary 
tactic because if you went outside at night, the white lady might pick you up thinking that you're her baby. So you needed to stay in, in the house and get in bed in times or the white lady would take you. You also have the other one who was Nina Grunvig and her story is related to cars and it's documented by people hearing a woman screaming, help me. Her husband had just died and her family convinced her that she needed to go and have fun at the store's swimming pool and tennis courts. Nina was up there in a Model T Ford. She was trying to drive down the hill and she told her kids to get out, which was actually a good thing because in a narrow little ledge, avoiding a tennis court and a huge drop off with a car that suddenly lurches in reverse, she couldn't control it. She actually did fly over backwards in reverse. The car landed at the bottom on its top. The kids and her friends went running down the little narrow path screaming, help us and she landed in the store's bakery. They got her out, they got the car over, and she ended up dying a couple of hours later. Some of her story has blended into the white lady a little bit, and so you sit there and go, okay, the white lady did not drive a car up and hang herself. So that's how we started separating out stories. So the ghost stories, of course, um, have expanded over the years. A lot of people have sworn that they have seen the white lady. They've seen her walking down the road. Uh, they've seen her approach their cars. Uh, several people have said that they've uh, been up there just sitting, you know, in the car and you can hear a woman wailing. Uh, so yeah, there have been several documented actual sightings that were not dresses on pulleys. The Castlegate mine number two exploded on March 8th, 1924 and killed 170 miners and one rescue worker. They have stories of ghosts appearing before there would be another collapse in the mine or, or some kind of dangerous situation. A lot of people have said that inside the Latuta mine, they would see the white lady just pass by and know they needed to get out that she was warning them of some danger. I honestly think it was more of a warning, uh, just based on what I know of the ghost stories in other mines. The Latuta mine itself never had a major disaster. Um, I hate to say that when, when you think of how many people died individually in, in coal mining related accidents, but it never had a major collapse, nor did it have a major disaster of any kind. So maybe she has been protecting the mine for all this time. Castle Country's history is riddled with wild stories. You never know what you'll find when you start turning over rocks. <laughs>